Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Death by Pony and today we're hopping back into our life. So, um, we are going to finish up the, uh, intro to this step and we'll go from there. Baxter then turned on his heel and strolled back into his suitcase, picking it up after bringing it to his condo. You and Cove were silent as Baxter unlocked the door and disappeared inside the house. With him completely out of the scene, Cove let out a long breath. Well... I don't know how I'm going to explain that guy to my dad. He burst into a fit of laughter trying to imagine the conversation. At least the job is done. We saw the new neighbor and now we can go meet up with Terry and Miranda. Yeah, we should get going. You gave Baxter, Baxter's condo one last glance over your shoulder. You were looking forward to seeing more of him. You thought he was charming. You were not interested in him. You weren't sure how to feel. You thought he gave a pretty bad first impression. You decided he definitely wasn't someone you liked. We're looking forward to seeing more of him. Baxter was different, but you liked him. Smiling, he hoped that he would become good. You would he would become a good friend this summer. Turning your attention back to Cove, you push all thoughts of Baxter aside. You both started making your way towards town. A little while later, you and Cove reached the main street in town. All of a sudden, you stopped walking. Hmm. What's wrong? I feel like my I feel I think I felt my phone vibrate. You dug your phone cell phone out and. Looked at it with a satisfied grin. There was a new message. Before you could read it, you were distracted by a small amused noise from Cove. His head was slightly tilted to the side as he carefully looked at your old keychain. I can't believe you still have that. Of course I do. I love it. Well, someone was crazy enough to get it for me, so I may as well use it. You shrugged. You quietly blushed at him, pointing it out. Of course I do. I love it. You meant it. The intensity of your words had Cove blushing and looking away from you. For a moment, you were both at a loss for more words. You were sucked into remembering that day he bought it for you. Cove was the one who so spoke up again. It's nice. I'm actually glad you like it. He looked back at you with a playful grin. Especially since it cost me a whole six dollars. That's thirty dollars in kid money. His matter-of-fact tone had you laughing deep. It took several moments to compose yourself enough to speak. I didn't realize that, that was the going rate. It was then, probably more now. So you're trying to say you were a big spender? In kid money? Yes, I was definitely a high roller, remember? That had you both bursting into fits. Smiling, you were focused on the task at hand. You opened the new text from Miranda, and all you saw was, I can see you. Immediately from where you stood, you started swiveling your head around. You couldn't spot Miranda anywhere, but she did send you more messages haha ha, I see you looking where are you haha ha, come on really Randy haha ha, come on the message was sent and you were back to looking around scanning for any sign of movement and familiar faces but they were still invisible Cove looked at you carefully raising an eyebrow you sighed at the ridiculous you burst out laughing at her accents you sent your own joking text Miranda come out joking text if you want to keep hiding, Co and I can just do our own stuff without you, is what you decided on. You smirked hitting send on the last message. Co looked at you curious, raising an eyebrow. Uh, what's happening? Before you could even begin to explain anything to Co, you both snapped your attention to yelling from across the street. In there you saw Miranda and Terry coming out from behind the backside wall of the grocery store. They both started waving widely to draw even more attention to themselves. Cove took a step in the direction, grinning, but he put he put his hand around his mouth to better project his message across the street. Hey! Laughing arm in arm, the girls stopped only to look both ways and then rushed across the empty street. Hi! I hope you weren't look waiting too long. Hey, buddies. Hey, buddies. Oh, my God. Hi. Hi. That joke was not funny. I'm amazed. How did you appear out of nowhere like that? Hey, I'm so happy to see you. I thought you both knew better than to jaywalk. Wordlessly, you answered. Happy to see them. Now that they were here, their joke on you was already long forgotten in your mind. Terry and Miranda giggled, smiling widely at your declaration. Terry then closed the distance between her and Cove and crushed him in a painfully tight hug. You're finally here. It's been so long. What took you? He did his best to eke out a reply with his chest being compressed. Sorry. Sorry. Eventually, she let him go. Terry looked at him with a beaming smile, but Cove 
was distracted, rubbing his arms. Standing there, Miranda shifted her weight to her other hip. She watched Cove patiently waiting with a bashful smile. Welcome back. Thanks. It finally felt official. Everybody was together in one place. From here, you weren't sure how often you'd have another afternoon like this again. They didn't either. So? Cove. Terry poked Cove square in the chest. You're going to have to get me your schedule by this time yesterday. No way. Not really possible, Terry, but I can say as soon as I know so far, work hasn't said anything, but I can tell you I'm busy with ORCA activities. When Cove wasn't at his part-time job and pushing his academic interests, he volunteered for the Ocean Restoration California affiliation. The group focused on cleaning up beaches and removing pollution from the ocean. Cove always loved the sea. It didn't surprise you one bit when he started getting involved with them. It was Cove's activity. You joined ORCA after learning of it. You were an ORCA member and are choosing to Cove. I did a lot of volunteering in school. I won't lie. So, uh, their big smash event for the year is coming up, right? Isn't it? Yeah, there's not much more to do before then, but I'm kind of looking forward to the fundraising push. Hopefully we can pull it off. If anyone can do it, it's you two. And even if it goes really bad, it'll still look good on a college application at least. Um, that's true. Hey. Hey, guess what else? We don't have to stand here and say stuff. Let's go. I would like a meal now. Bringing up Cove nodded in agreement. Yeah, I'm <laughs> not in agreement. Yeah, I'm hungry. Time to head out. The four of you then headed into town, happily chatting the whole way. The only decision left to make was where exactly to stop and eat. The rest of the afternoon and evening passed by in a blink of an eye. When the night fell, it was time to head home, and you partied, parted ways with Miranda and Terry. You and Cove reached your neighborhood without event. It was late enough that your out-of-the-way street was dark and silent. You were tired of walking such a long night. You strolled with skipping your step. You ambled along. Skip in our step. Days like today, filled with good food, good company, left you feeling energized. As you walked alongside Cove, you peered at his face at the corner of your eyes. You wondered why he felt so distant to you. You knew Cove well enough to know this wasn't new for him, but this felt more than usual. For a while, Cove silently stared ahead and left you alone with your thoughts. It surprised you when you did hear his voice all of a sudden. He still wouldn't look at you. Aye. It feels weird coming back to the neighborhood and trying to get into things like they're the same, and they're not. They've changed. They're still changing. Your mouth felt uncomfortably dry all of a sudden. It was true. Things that kept the people you knew together were starting to disappear. Each person had to make their own priorities and their own paths now. That was that it now that it wasn't set for them you thought about your own immediate future you were still set you were still set on that for yourself you wanted uh probably uh school part-time because that's what i do now and i um go to uh work part-time too uh, and work part-time and that was the basics. For your career, you thought you'd find a company to work at, work online, do contracts, start your own. Or starting your own business. Uh, and that was all. For your education, you thought you'd attend community college, public university, go to a private college, join a trade school, take an online class. I go to community college. Um, and probably after that, private college. And that was all. And for that, you'd wanted to stay local it'll all be happening so soon you'd already applied to schools and jobs you'd already applied to schools you already applied to jobs you started preparing for what to come schools we have applied to schools you'd been open about your situation and everyone knew you'd only spoken about this with family close friends kept it all to yourself open now you wondered what cove had in mind you had heard him consider some things for his future but it was never anything that would have counted as a real plan Making it back home, you both stopped in the middle of the street, Cove sighed. Awkwardly, Cove rubbed his arm and looked at you. It was like he knew what you were thinking. I don't have a plan for any of that future and stuff. Not really. But all I know is that I'm going to de not going to decide this summer. You're not? No, I can do it. It's I can't do it. It's too fast. I'm not ready. I'm So I'm going to stay here, at least in Sunset Bird. I'll probably move out of my dad's place. He looked away from you now. You could tell he was carefully putting his thoughts together. I don't know. 
Maybe I'll know what I want for myself by fall or next year. Or maybe I'll never have a plan. Life will continue with whatever's happening happening. I'm not gonna rush, gonna crush myself trying to have everything figured out by a timeline that someone else has set. I just can't do it. His brows forward and his tone was set. It was clear how much expectations were weighing on him. That sounds very you. You're not in agreement. If she's the best. You shrugged. You wondered why he chose this, chose to confess that to you. Sounds very him. Cove chuckled, and the tension he was holding his shoulder appeared to loosen. I think so too. Cove looked up to the sky. It was dotted with stars. He smiled. See you tomorrow. Well, I'll see you tomorrow, Airy. Then Cove started walking away, but he remained there, frozen in the middle of the street. You watched him and wondered how many more times will he be able to say that he'll see you tomorrow. Finally, you turned towards your own house. You vowed to yourself that you would make the most out of every moment you had this summer. Ugh. Hope you enjoyed Hope today's video. And if you did, remember to hit like and subscribe. That way YouTube can bring you back so you can see the end of this. Because you do, don't you? Anyway, I hope you have a good day. And I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.